The Global Cybersecurity Capacity Building Centre exists primarily so that we can increase the knowledge of what works and what doesn't work and under what conditions you may take different investment or policy decisions so that we can better protect cyberspace. When you take a step back and you look at what the future may hold, there is no future that does not involve cyberspace. And so understanding how to affect cybersecurity to protect assets and emotional experience and people's needs across all of these different levels, as well as protecting it as an environment in itself, so that it is there for the future, that's incredibly important. And the work of the, of the centre is not just to understand in each of these spaces what effective good cybersecurity looks like, it's also to understand how we can measure it over time, how, can, how we can check that we're investing the right way, evolving in the right directions. It's also looking across them and to understand how they affect each other. Is it possible that we might set policy and make decisions in one part of society that has a real negative consequence for another? And so we really need to get on top of those decisions and we need to help parts of the world that are, are less mature in delivering cybersecurity catch up to the others because ultimately we are interdependent and interlinked. We see cybersecurity capacity building involving a number of dimensions. There's some obvious dimensions, one being the ability to defend yourself and your systems within cyberspace. That also relates to being able to set good policy decisions. Can you construct policy in one area that's supportive of policies in another area? And do you understand how to do that on a global and international stage? Do we have the right tools and technologies to protect cyberspace? Um, that involves also the right standards, access to the right business models and the right processes. Another key aspect of cybersecurity capacity building is that of being able to construct the right legal and regulatory environments. And by that, we don't just mean your ability to police that part of cyberspace for which you're concerned, but also your ability to create legal and regulatory environments where organisations and enterprises will flourish and will ultimately adopt more safe and secure behaviours in everything that they do. But we also view cybersecurity capacity building as involving a very social and cultural dimension. Do we really understand what it takes to ensure that members of society are able to take responsibility for the bits of cyberspace that we require them to? That's exceptionally important, as is having access to, the, to trained workforces, knowledgeable leaderships, right from presidents and prime ministers down through the boards of our largest companies, right down to the cleaners Anyone that has access to any part of cyberspace, whether that's pieces of kit, whether that's their mobile phones at home or at work, we require them to have a different understanding and an effective understanding of what it takes to protect the piece of cyberspace you're responsible for. At times that involves protecting the corporation that you might work for's assets. At times you are charged with protecting a nation or the international community and at times you're charged with protecting your home and your personal life and your kids lives and your parents lives. Whichever perspective and whichever role you have and many of us have multiple roles we need to ensure that we understand what kind of things you need to be educated on and we understand therefore how we do that at what age and in what medium. So the key outputs of the centre are not going to just solely be what does best practice look like and how can we affect it, but also a capability maturity model that will enable us to benchmark the performance of nations, of regions, of communities, so that they can plan where and where, when they should seek to increase their maturity and their ability to protect themselves and cyberspace. We'll also be looking to put all of this knowledge online so that people around the world can benefit from this. Ultimately, we hope that this will result in not just more policy options being on the table, but better policy options being on the table, as well as clear business cases so that those that are involved in developing new cybersecurity solutions 
will be able to innovate and create towards the areas that we really need them to so that we can better protect ourselves in the future. So the risks we face if we don't properly address cybersecurity capacity building are very great. There, I imagine there is nobody that would doubt that cyberspace is central to modern living today. And in fact, it's essential to the developing world today and in the future. But if you look at all of the solutions that are being proposed for solving some of the greatest challenges we face, whether that's climate change, food security, the list goes on. All of those solutions will in some way depend upon cyberspace. And so we face a, an extremely high risk that if we don't manage to maintain a cyberspace that people have faith and trust in and can engage with, we can no longer deliver on those solutions in the future.